Hey everyone, I'm in Denver right now and check out this beautiful view. So beautiful, right? Last few days, I was in Seattle for GrafanaCon 2025 and the experience was amazing. I got to learn so many new things about Grafana and also got a chance to interact with Grafana founders. In this video, we are talking to Torkel, the founder and creator of Grafana. So if you're someone who is learning about Grafana or observability, this video is going to be super informative for you. So make sure you watch this video till the end. I'm going to go take a walk and if you have questions, let me know in the comment section. Hey everyone, I'm here with Torkel, co-founder of Grafana and I have some questions to ask. So hi Torkel. Hi, good to uh, be here. This is my first international conference yeah. and I'm so glad to be attending GrafanaCon. Yeah. So many features about Grafana 12. Can you please tell us more about like new features and how we can use it? Well, I mean, Grafana 12 comes with a lot of new things, like some really big, new, impactful things that are still kind of things we're working through. So the new Git Sync integration is something we've been talking about for, for many years, mm -hmm. uh, as well as kind of really doing new fundamental capabilities for dashboards. So both of those are, are things that are still kind of out in, in experimental form and we're going to need some more time to make them generally available. But mm -hmm. they're also super big and impactful and things that people have been asking for for many, many years. Right. So you mentioned about Git Sync and Observability as Code. Yeah. So can you please explain easily what is Observability as Code? Yeah. So, so Observability as Code is kind of an extension of Infrastructure as Code, which is, has been a been big kind of trend to kind of define your infrastructure and your uh, networking and your deployments as well through version control and code. So observability as code, being able to do that for your dashboards, your alert rules, your no notification systems as well. So what we're doing in Grafana 12 is kind of unifying all our APIs mm -hmm. behind a new versioned standardized API with standardized metadata and standardized kind of interactions. And on top of this, we're building an, a kind of integrated Git sync. So mm -hmm. you can directly from the UI configure Grafana to pull dashboards and, and in future everything you care about from a GitHub repo into mm -hmm. your Grafana. And then from within Grafana also, then you can then edit changes and push that to mm -hmm. Git, either in a pull request or directly create uh, commits. So that right. two-way kind of sync, because that, that's always been the big problem with people who have done this in the past, who mm -hmm. have kind of, ha okay, I want my dashboard and everything in, in, and my alert rules, and I want everything in, in my GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. But then they kind of lose a lot of the flexibility of editing dashboards from the UI. Right. Uh, or that process becomes a lot more painful. They have to sort of, after they make a change, they have to find what, where is this repo saved and, and, and make the changes there as well. So that, that's kind of the, the big change there is that this mm -hmm. makes it so much easier to get started and use dashboards or observability as code. Right. Uh, another key use case with Git Sync is something that a lot of Grafana users want is to have, maybe they have a dev instance or productions instance, and they want to synchronize kind of dashboards and, mm. and configuration between different Grafana instances. Right. So with Grafana 12, it's all automated? Yeah, it's all, all automated, but also built around uh, on top of these standardized APIs. Mm -hmm. And so you can still, if you want to sort of do this through a, a GitHub CI, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that. But we now have a very easy to use kind of command line tools as well that can mm -hmm. push and sync uh, uh, dashboards and more. Right. When you first created Grafana, yeah. it's been so many years now. Yeah. Like, do you think it would become so big and so many projects now? No, I mean, of course not. Grafana started just a, uh, as a hobby project in the beginning, but then it kind of very quickly grew uh, in popularity within the monitoring community, as it was kind of called then, before we moved on to the word observability. Mm -hmm. But I, th I think that the, 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 the great thing with, with Grafana that, that has surprised me a lot is kind of the fact that it is used for such a wide array of use cases. It's mm -hmm. not just for monitoring or observability, it's for everything. Like, uh, as I mentioned in the keynotes, like mm -hmm. monitoring volcanoes or landing a, a lunar probe mm -hmm. on, on the moon. So that, that's kind of what's, what's really surprised me, the, the breadth of different kind of applications mm -hmm. uh, where Grafana is being used. Yeah, I did check your keynote uh, yeah. and like you had some use cases yeah. where Grafana was used by airports and also by F1s. Yeah. So, can you tell me about some interesting or unexpected use cases? Well, I mean, I, I think those are unexpected. Uh, my favorite has always been, I met a few years ago at Fostum, someone who's building, having beehives and mm -hmm. monitoring beehives using Grafana. Very surprising use case. But the cool thing that, that surprised me was how 
the information and the story he could tell from mm -hmm. looking at those graphs. Right. And that was graphs like just the weight of a beehive and the temperature. And the story he could tell from looking at how that changed over time mm. was just incredible. Okay, here you can see them leaving in the morning to collect nectar. And here you can see the weight increase as they come back with nectar. And here you can see the queen leave. Mm. Uh, so the story that he could deduce from looking at a graph of, mm. say, weight or temperature. Yeah, well, that, 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 that really blew my mind. I did also check like some use yeah. cases in the science fair. Yeah. I saw people using Grafana for like bird voices. Yeah. The 3D printer as well. Yeah, no, there's a lot of cool, cool use cases there. How do you keep Grafana easy to use while still adding these advanced features? So this has been the, the biggest conundrum or biggest like challenge for me uh, over sort of most of the years. It's like how, how to uh, make Grafana a very powerful advanced tool that meets the needs for, for, for technically, technically advanced users, mm -hmm. while also making it accessible for everyone. So uh, in the early days, we had this kind of slogan, democratize metrics. And, and that was really ambition to make observability and, and Grafana itself as a tool mm -hmm. accessible to anyone uh, and easy to use. But how to square that with, with then uh, the ever increasing demand of new features, new capabilities, be able to do more has been a challenge. Every new feature needs to have a pretty strong justification. Right. So because every new feature, almost every case makes makes it more complicated right. and makes it maybe harder for, for new users. Unless it's a spe feature that's specifically targeting kind of novice users or new mm. users. But anyway, I, I'm trying to be re really careful about adding new features. Mm -hmm. Really think about the user experience and the U U UI and, mm -hmm. and uh, like how can we optimize the UI to uh, not overwhelm users. I'm not saying Grafana is is, is great at this mm. because it's it's a very hard challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the other, the other thing that, that where I'm trying to sort of solve this problem is always think how can we make the things we have built easier? How ca how can we rethink the existing functionality to make it more intuitive, more easy to use for new users? So not only adding features, mm -hmm. like reworking existing features. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I approach that problem. But when you look at if anyone who's trying to learn observability or monitoring, mm -hmm. they'd probably start with Prometheus and Grafana yeah. compared to any other tools. Yeah. So let's say like observability is a term which is very complex for many companies to use. Yeah. Right. So let's say I want to learn observability. Yeah. How should I start with it? Like what things should I follow? So I mean I think there's there's lots of starting guides on the internet to sort of to, to learn you the basics of okay what 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 should I monitor? Yeah. And especially with these new kind of sort of AI chatbots, I think that there's probably a good starting point. Like, okay, what, what's what's the key signals? Like, you learn about the red method, uh, latency, response load, etc. So I think that looking at the key th signals uh, and and ask ChatGPT, uh, um, yeah. and I think because that that's going to be I think the evolution of how you learn Grafana as well. Mm. Uh, given uh, the kind of new AI assistant that we're bringing to Grafana, mm. it's going to help you become an observability expert very mm. quickly. Yeah, you mentioned about ChatGPT. Yeah. The last question I would ask you about is the Grafana AI Assistant. I, th I think the Grafana AI Assistant is, is going to be really uh, key in, in making every Grafana user an expert uh, mm -hmm. quickly and then leveling, up, leveling them up in terms of like both uh, knowing about observability, knowing about how to operate Grafana, mm -hmm. and how to troubleshoot. Right. So I think that that's exciting future there is that instead of spending hours reading the docs mm. and trying to kind of learn about observability and, mm. and best practices and how to accomplish things in Grafana, the, the AI assistant is going to help you with that. Right. Yeah, with these tools. Also, I uh, read the launch about Grafana MCP server because I'm a Docker captain yeah. to get these news. And I saw like Grafana launch an MCP server along with Docker. Yeah. Yeah, with these tools, Grafana would be like easy to use and easy to implement, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. No, yeah, no, thank you. It was great talking to you. Yeah. If you found this video helpful, please like this video and subscribe to CloudChamp for more such videos. Thank you and have a good day.